Today, I'm going to show you a trick to power an electronic device, such as an aquarium pump, inside of an aquarium or terrarium like this without having to drill holes or drape cords over the top. This is a problem that has bugged me for a while. When I made my first paludarium, I installed a small pump in the back corner and I had to drape that cord out and over the edge of the glass. This looked really ugly. This is a common theme for a lot of projects that I think of or work on. And honestly, it holds me back from working on a lot of cool stuff. Originally, like most people, I thought the solution was to drill holes in the glass. However, I find the process of drilling glass to be very burdensome. You need a drill, you need specialized drill bits, you need gloves, water, you need to worry about glass shards, and it just makes a mess. Further, some containers just can't be drilled. For example, anything made of tempered glass, like the bottom of most aquariums. Also, anything made of thin glass or hand-blown glass or anything that even has an irregular shape. For example, this container here. This is a vase. Uh, you can see in the bottom, it is concave and it is quite an odd shape. Really not something that's gonna be easy to drill through. These limitations have held me back, but that ends today. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to power an aquarium pump through a layer of glass wirelessly. The first thing we're going to need is obviously an aquarium pump. I'm gonna be using one that is USB powered. This means that it is by default designed to take five volt DC power because that's the USB standard. This method can work with other voltages but sticking to five volts will make things as simple as possible. The reason for that is, as you probably already know, a lot of electronic devices are powered by USB cords, including phones. That means that phone chargers, including this wireless one here, are designed to deliver five volts of DC power. This wireless charger is the secret to making today's video work. Wireless chargers transmit power through the air in the form of an alternating magnetic field this magnetic field is turned back into electricity by a similar circuit inside of your phone. You can find a wide range of wireless electricity circuit components online for all sorts of voltages, but five volts is going to be the most common. You can also just use a phone charger like I'm using. Sticking to five volts also means it's really easy to find components to power. Just find anything USB powered and it will work. USB light, USB fan, USB humidifier. In our case, we're using a USB water pump that I got off of Amazon for about $12. But if you don't mind waiting a while, you can also buy similar pumps directly from China. I recently ordered another one for $4 on AliExpress. I'm actually working on a whole video dedicated to showing off a bunch of really weird terrarium related supplies that I got off of AliExpress. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications it should be coming out in a couple of weeks. In addition to a wireless transmitter and a device that we want to power, we also need one more component, which is the wireless receiver. Like the transmitter, the receiver is designed to receive power of a particular voltage. So make sure your transmitter and your receiver line up. Once again, instead of buying a loose component for our wireless receiver, I chose to purchase this little device, which is a wireless charging receiver that's designed to plug into your phone, go behind your phone case, and allow you to do wireless charging. I figured the fact that it was already contained in some way might make my life slightly easier. Uh, in particular, I also assumed the plug would be attached by a simple positive and negative wire. So I was pretty disappointed to find this. I was also kind of disappointed to see that the housing was really just a kind of sticker. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be actively absorbing water, so I'm going to assume it's not a big deal. In retrospect though, a normal component receiver might have made my life easier. I cut the pump's cord and used a razor to strip off the rubber housing around the wires. I then soldered these wires to the terminals on the wireless receiver. The next step is to drown everything in hot glue. This gives it some stability, some questionable waterproofing, and the professional polish that this channel prides itself on. 
And just like that, we now have a pump that we can power through the glass of an aquarium. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be using this vase that I showed earlier. If you're wondering where to get cool, kind of desktop sized terrariums like this one, and you happen to live in the vicinity of one of these red dots, then the answer is home goods. I've gone to many stores and this is pretty much the only one that consistently offers a wide range of really cool glassware at an actually affordable price point. This terrarium has a concave bottom, which fits our wireless charger nicely, but also introduces some additional gap. It's kind of hard to measure, but I would estimate there is probably about half an inch between the charger and the inside of the glass where the receiver will go. This is probably starting to push the limits as far as the distance between the transmitter and receiver, at least for this pretty basic charger that I have. Luckily, I tested it beforehand and sure enough, it works fine. Phew. Now that we have our pump hooked up, I filled the terrarium with water. And now it's time for the moment of truth. Will it work? Did I solder this correctly? Was the $14 I spent on Amazon worth it? Yes, sure enough, it worked. The pump was being powered underwater through the glass wirelessly. This was amazing. This setup is a bit small for what I have in mind, so I won't be doing a full terrarium build today. But for fun, I wanted to put the wireless aquarium pump to one more test and to see if I could replicate a really cool phenomenon. I first observed this many years ago in the woods behind my house. But this winter, I made the trip back with my camera to record it for you guys. So what we have is a pretty normal stream, but what's weird about it is that it just kind of starts here, out of nowhere, seemingly. But when you get closer, you can see that the water is actually bubbling up from under the ground. Since discovering this, I've been mesmerized by the way the sand dances and swirls in the water. And ever since, I've dreamed of creating an aquarium to replicate this effect. To get started, I'm going to create a simple housing for our pump. I'm using an old yogurt container for this. I'll be using the sponge as a filter to prevent some of the debris from entering the pump. As we'll see later, this is actually much too coarse, but it's what I had on hand. I test fit everything and then mark the edges of where the filter sponge rests. I then drew a grid over this and drilled a set of extremely precise holes. This will only allow water to enter the pump through the sponge. I cut out a slot for the pump's wire and another hole for the tube. I also plugged the end of the tube and drilled a hole in the side for water to exit. I added everything to the vase and held the components down with some pebbles. And then I poured in a layer of sand. I made sure to wash this very thoroughly beforehand to try and limit the amount of dust that would cloud the water. I didn't know what to expect at this point, but I was pretty excited. I put the charger in place, plugged it in, and then, after a brief delay, boom. Take a look at that. It's just like the real thing, and the effect was absolutely stunning. Even more so when viewed from under the water. Unfortunately, the sand I'm using is very fine. This diminishes the effect slightly, but also means that the sand particles are easily suspended in the water. Combined with an overly coarse filter sponge, I'm afraid some of the sand is ending up in the pump, which is leading to a grinding noise that I'm starting to hear. For now though, I'm very happy with this. In the future, I'm hoping to set up a paludarium that not only captures these beautiful underwater springs even better, but also the dramatic water's edge and the lush fields of moss surrounding it. I also look forward to trying this technique with other devices that might be useful in a terrarium, such as lights, fans, maybe even a humidifier. If you guys have other ideas, leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching.